Hello, beta testers. Did you know, in Marvel's Avengers, the only time heroes speak to each other is in cutscenes or an elevator. And even then, their lines can still get cut off. How does it feel to have returned? Feels, uh, good. Feels right, you know? I do. It seems we've destroyed the aim power cores. You may not have noticed, but your brain did. In fact, outside of lines accompanying attacks or heroes yelling that another player has been downed, there isn't much interaction at all. Hmm. Really makes you think. Comparatively, in Star Wars Battlefront, heroes have banter specific to the other heroes they encounter. In-game, in the middle of a fight. Anakin, what are you doing here? You were supposed to report back to Coruscant. I'm back on Coruscant in spirit. Oh, why do I even try? Something I should know? We'll talk, but later. Am I their target or you? Hard to tell these days. Multiple lines, and not just for the heroes they encounter either. If it isn't my favorite bounty hunter, what are they paying you? I'll double it. You should have hired me first. Skywalker. Father, I've come to stop you. Your rebellion has become an irritant. Battlefront even incorporated lines for encounters that make no in-universe sense. There's something wrong about you. I know you somehow. Anakin Skywalker no longer exists. It may not seem like a big deal, but it all adds up. In Marvel's Avengers, heroes and NPCs give bad writers an excuse to flex through cringe lines. I love violent girl talk. I love violent girl talk. Uh, I'm not the one who spent the last five years playing air guitar, my dude. My dude. Dude, I feel you. You may not even have noticed, but your brain did. Oh my god, hi. Alright, you do you, even if you suck. <laughs> kidding. I'm totally kidding. NPCs in other games are an opportunity for lore to make the world seem lived in. And sure, 90% of your players only care about their quests and they'd gladly get them from a silent machine if they could. But the other 10%? The players curious about what a throwaway line could mean. They will Google it. They'll find a lore video and kick back and listen, maybe even while playing the game. In mere minutes, Zavala dropped non-stop lines about the wall. Wherever a guardian stands, there stand the true walls. Lines about other characters. There is nothing in the speaker's journals to explain what happened with Trevor. A reference to the art of war. Even Sun Tzu offers no answers. Even the most uninterested gamers, over time, begin to understand Zavala's got a boner for the wall. He believes in standing his ground. What do lines like these tell me about these people? Somebody wants to keep me in coffee, don't you? Not gonna fund my coffee habit? Really? Jesus. It's like they're writing for Kat Denning's character, but for everybody in the game? Zavala, by the way, voiced by the legendary Lance Reddick, who cultured people might know from Bosch, The Wire, or John Wick. You need a new desk. Let's not even forget he was modeled right into Horizon Zero Dawn, a game still so impeccable that even its photo mode is vastly superior to the one in the Avengers. Same as Insomniac Spider-Man, and they're actually comic book and movie accurate, not inspired, skins. It may just seem like a picture mode to some, but photographs are how we make moments immortal. Capture technology has been incorporated into modern gaming consoles to specifically allow players to retroactively capture videos of their exploits. And yes, many people don't even know that their devices can capture and save the past 5, 10, or even 30 minutes of footage. But the players who are aware are making, sharing, and streaming content that markets better than any developers or marketing committee could. To a fan? The significance of something as simple as being able to create their own comic book cover with the tools given to them in-game cannot be overstated. It all adds up. The other people covering this game will only ever talk about tweets and promises and what's coming in the future. But in actually trying to play this game, I can tell you, viewer, I can't even capture footage without reminders that Marvel games allow players to super heroic heights.
But in Crystal Dynamics Avengers, the height limit is six stories up. Does this fact make me a hater? 4K graphics, 60 FPS, but no comic book accurate or MCU suits for your Marvel heroes? In fact, skins that I purchased don't look the way they did when I bought them because of texture bugs. The dailies are still bugged, so there are only two villains on rotation to fight after seven months in a Marvel game? Traversal is and looks pathetic. Black Widow and Hawkeye have grappling hooks but inexplicably can't whip themselves forward like Spidey can. Pym technology exists in this universe, but instead of motorcycles or flying drones that can shrink and grow for immediate deployment, jumping is how you traverse the map. Annoying coffee lines are not enough. The in-game vendor's inventory is bugged, so barely anything appears, but let's be real, even if it wasn't bugged, there'd be nothing to buy. The emotes are so dated and stale, and since there's no emote wheel and we're forced to use only one at a time, knock yet another thing off the infinite list of ways we can't interact with one another. In Stark, pun intended, contrast to almost every other game in this space. Made more abysmal by the lack of synergy attacks among heroes in fights, why can a LEGO game preserve the essence of a Marvel team-up better than you. The blueprints have long been established. Why can a mobile game flawlessly execute the identical look that players will pay hand over foot for better than you? How did you make a looter with loot so bad? Sometimes it's dropping without perks and the blues are outstanding gear, three rarities above it. Why are you name dropping Marvel Heroes and Destiny when you'll never be able to match the chaotic gameplay that they managed? Why should we believe that you even understand what Patrol or Midtown Manhattan provided players, let alone whether or not you can pull it off? Remember, I've been here from the very beginning. D and I saw respawning high priority targets and we watched you turn it off. You could have modified the drop rates and allowed these high priority targets to continue to respawn, but instead, with your game in its broken state, a state that it's still in, you saw fit to take another thing that players had to do. You've unironically chosen to increase the grind, and not just blatantly by giving less XP, but artificially by guaranteeing the spawns of enemies that'll explode or die and leave an area of effect so you can't stand there, or Cosmic Surge debuffs to bounce players away from one another just to slow down the progression of the boring, stand-in-this-circle nightmare you call gameplay. The first Destiny in 2014 at launch understood that it needed multiple enemy factions and polished functional gameplay to keep people invested enough, or at the very least, not leave a taste so bad that people would never want to come back. Avengers, comparatively, has a harm room that you can't change the environment of. Imagine the Danger Room, or Star Trek's holodeck, only ever looking like this. But Scott Amos considers the harm room like Endgame. A training room, to this man, is like Endgame. At no point will the harm room ever look like this. You're paying for skins that could inevitably end up bugged and stay bugged for over two weeks. And maybe you understand the reason that I'll never let clowns, little boys, wannabe bullies move the goalpost instead of addressing my points. Because when you're right, people arguing can only ignore it. And Crystal Dynamics has ignored this for seven months. Your looter has bad loot. Bugged missions, no end game. Your cosmetics are too expensive, especially for the unappealing designs. Your game needs villains, enemy factions, heroes, and locations. Don't hold off for some big update. Screw the cutscene diarrhea and repetitive missions. Dump them in. Get an endgame. Even your most devoted defenders see the writing on the wall and wholeheartedly believe you're trying to accelerate this game's demise. 
Tomorrow, Dia and I will be playing Outriders going forward. It's crossplay, and I hope you'll join us for what'll definitely be entertaining. No sarcasm, I wish Marvel's Avengers luck in achieving whatever it seeks to be. It's a real shame that it doesn't seem to be lining up with what any of us wanted. I'll stream if this game updates in a crazy way in the future. Like and subscribe and you'll see me in the future. Uh, love you. Links in the description. Get me some video game voice work. Man, I wish people cared enough about this game so that somebody would mod some really good looking skins into the PC version. Maybe someday. This sure doesn't feel like destiny. This sure doesn't feel like destiny. This sure doesn't feel like destiny. Should have brought a first aid kit.